make sense. Welcome aboard on this Tuesday. Question for you. A week from Tuesday, will Nick Sirianni still be the head football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles this day next week? Will he still be the head coach? You know, I'm starting to get a sense that there's a tsunami coming. Today we have Merrill Reese on at 3.30. We're going to move tone to 4.30. I heard Merrill Reese on WIP, and he was asked the question, have you ever gone through anything like this? And I'm paraphrasing. Have you ever felt anything like this? You know what he said? Yeah. The last year when Doug was fired. Mel Reese, the play-by-play legendary voice of the Eagles, says that this feels like the year, and you have 11 wins that Doug Peterson was fired. Can you believe? I mean, you won 11 games, and the legendary play-by-play guy feels like this is the year that You won four games that year. So to Merrill Reese, this feels like a four-win team. Let me me say again to you, that's incredible. That's not me talking here. That's a guy who you were raised on. Many of you... That's the only voice of the Philadelphia Eagles you've ever known is Merrill Reese. And when he said that, it floored me. Because I think that's how all of you are feeling now. 11 wins is almost insignificant. It's really not. It's quite an accomplishment to get double-digit wins in this league. When the league is built on parity. Okay, the league is built on everybody going eight and nine, nine and eight. That's what the league, they want the league around those numbers. They don't like dynasties. That's why you have a cap. And that's why you have a draft set up the way it is. They feed the poor in that league, unlike any other league. Baseball, basketball, they don't feed the poor. The NFL feeds the poor. You're only as strong as the weakest links Weakest organizations in your sport. The NFL sets up the league to make sure the bottom half get better so that they're strong in all and in whole. So that all 32 teams, that's why they have profit sharing. The NFL is a business model that every league should follow. Unfortunately, they can't because you know why? What's the number one thing that the NFL has over every league? What's the number one thing? Do you guys know? Do you guys know the number one thing that you have over every league? Okay? What's the one thing? What's the one thing? TV? Fan base? No. They don't guarantee the contracts of players. Players' contracts aren't guaranteed. That's the one thing they have over every league. LeBron James's contract would not be guaranteed in the NFL. They, they don't guarantee the deals. Only one guy's got a contract that's guaranteed, and they hate the deal. Hey, by the way, before we move on, there's really only few shows that allow people to come and have conversations with Big Sills and other places, and that's the Pat McAfee show. I watched Pat McAfee kick the shit out of Jimmy Kimmel today, and he stated what he exactly said, and it was classic. Uh, Pretty interesting. There'll be, and and again, they hate the guy because he's an anti vaxxer guy, and he's that dude. I'm not going to go more into it because that's not my lane. But I'll tell you what, man. 
ESPN hates that guy. And I'm talking McAfee because that was appointment setting television. You had to watch it. That's what broadcasting used to be, appointment setting. That's why some of you come here because it's appointment setting. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to tell you what I see. There's very few places like that on the planet that aren't going to wait pom-poms. There's just not. You see, what I don't have to do, I don't have to walk. The only time I have to walk back something is if a player does well. But if I walk back and I say something like, like my opinion will never change on Sirianni. No, I'll, I'll take that back. If he goes somewhere else and wins, and he gets the opportunity to see if he's a real coach, and he shows me that he's a coach like, like Doug is, then, then he will. He, he will change my opinion. He will change my opinion. Okay, he will. He, for Doug, hey, get this. For Nick Sirianni to be a really good head coach in the NFL, he's got to get out of Philly. And I got just a replacement. I'm making a bold request to the Novacare Center. At the conclusion, and tone, everyone, our good IT man, I am making a request for all of you at the Novacare Center. At the conclusion of this 2023-2024 season with the playoffs, I demand you fire Nick Sirianni and hire Mike Vrabel. You want accountability? There's your guy. There's your guy. So let me get this right. In the last three years, you get rid of Mike Vrabel and A.J. Brown. I'm not sure you – and a pretty good GM. I'm not sure you're doing a lot of right things in Tennessee right now. Derrick Henry would be out the building. They're just going to clean house. Once you hire a guy with some balls, the guy will tell you how it is. And the guy will coach Jalen Hurts hard. And he'll bring in people and ideas that you need from a coach. You better grab him. Or he's going to be grabbed up real soon. If that guy is not hired within a week, I'll be shocked. He'll be hired as quick as Tony Dungy was after Tony Dungy got fired in Tampa. Hire Mike Vrabel. I am making a request. Fire Nick Sirianni, no matter what on Tuesday of next week, after the Monday night game, or at the conclusion, let's do that, of the season, and hire Mike Vrabel. Get some balls in the building. Get some balls in the building. Bob Kraft is going to make him probably the highest paid NFL head coach. You see, a guy like Jim Harbaugh, who last night now has a $20 million price tag. I don't believe that Jeffrey Lurie would go up to that extent and pay Jim Harbaugh that kind of money. You want to hear something about Jim Harbaugh? Let me show you something here. You know why he's out of your price range? And he's also out of your coaching range. He's too good for you. I want to show you something here. Look at this. So Jim Harbaugh last night, after winning the national championship, has got 146 and 52 college record. At Michigan, he's 88 and 25. He's won 43 ball games in the last three years and lost three. He's 16 and 17 in the Big Ten. And in the NFL, he's 44, 19 and one, went to three straight NFC championship games and has one NFC title. And he played 17 years in the NFL. This guy's way over your skis. This is somebody that you cannot afford mentally, physically, spiritually. You couldn't handle this. The owner of the Eagles couldn't handle Harbaugh. So don't ever go down that lane because that's way beyond your means. And I mean your means because the owner would feel threatened. You couldn't hire a guy like that. Okay? 
You couldn't tolerate a guy telling you to sit down or go over there, or that's not how we're doing it. We're hiring him. You couldn't handle that. Vrabel may work with you. Former NFL guy, too. I like former NFL head coaches who, or former players who are NFL coaches. Because you know why? He wasn't coached lightly. I'm going to make a point to you here. Where's the topic page? Let's get into it. By the way, the last regular season, top 10 NFL power rankings for the top 10 teams and quarterbacks. How about this indictment on how you do business in Philly? Are you ready? Javon Hardgrave says it's kumbaya. And it's kind of a lazy attitude. And they really don't work hard in Philly. When I came to San Francisco, I couldn't believe how much attention to detail, how hard we worked, how much hitting we did, how much we practiced, how much we were in full gear. We're still in full gear. He said, when you're in Philly, it's a soft mentality. I added that. He didn't say soft. He said kumbaya. You've created a mental attitude in the Philly locker room that's soft. And when things go sideways, you're front runners. These are the words of Javon Hardgrave. The Philadelphia Eagles are officially front runners. You're front runners. You can't dig yourself out of the pit because you don't know how to. You couldn't do it in 20, and you can't do it now. You're incapable of digging yourself out of trouble. You don't have the mental fortitude in adversity. You know what you get? Nick Sirianni giving me 1930 Newt Rockney speeches. I don't want a Newt Rockney speech. I would tell everyone, shut up. Go to work. Think about that. Javon Hardgrave is calling you soft mentally. We wouldn't hire Vrabel because Howie would feel threatened. If you're Jeffrey Lurie, do you want to win or do you want to feel threatened? Anybody that challenges that, him a little, he would not hire. We have a control problem. Yes, sir. If you don't want to hire Mike Vrabel, instead of that cheerleader you have in the building right now, then you don't want to win. No. You kind of want to win. I'm going to say it one more time to you. That front office paid the bills, gathered some of the players. But like Jordan said, players got to go out and play. That 17 team was coaches and players that won that Super Bowl. It wasn't that front office. And they're taking credit for it. This is what happened last year. The front office did a really nice job at constructing and putting together a lot of veteran guys. One of the better rosters. But what's the one place that they failed? Coaching. That's all you need to know. In 17, you won the Super Bowl because of coaching. In 2022, you lost the Super Bowl because of coaching. That's hiring decisions. That's control decisions. It's simple. I'll tell you what, man. Once you figure the Rubik's Cube out, known as the Eagle Management Group, it ain't that hard to figure out. You keep hearing people talking about 
bringing – hey, you're either going to win or you're not going to win. Hire Vrabel. And if you don't hire Vrabel and you hire some nobody, you're going to know where we are. If you don't hire Mike Vrabel on Tuesday of next week or whenever your day is ended in the playoffs and you hire Nick Sirianni point two zero. 2.0. It won't matter. You're in a revolving door now. You Hey, I'll tell you something that makes this even more. The Eagles fight themselves. You have lowered your standards to where you're kind of like the Buccaneers now. And the Buccaneers are in a rebuild with a transition quarterback. You're supposed to be in a Super Bowl window. The Bucs are in a rebuild. And you're three and a half point favorites over that thing. They got better coaches than you. It's a shame, Shields, because we are saying all this shit, and we all know damn well they're not, they're going to keep Sirianni. Vrabel would punk Howie. You know, what happened? The general manager got fired. They kept Vrabel. In my opinion, Tennessee doesn't, and isn't committed to winning championships anymore. When you got Ryan Tannehill as your starting quarterback and you're consistently missing, what was the general manager's name that was fired? Do you know, go back and look at his record and how many times, was his name Peterson? Was his name like Peterson, the general manager of the Titans? He got fired because of the A.J. Brown deal. There's no question about it. But you have to wonder, did ownership make them move him? Did they underutilize him? Every coach needs a quarterback and really good coaching staff. Jimmy Johnson said that right here on this program. Javon Hardgrid called the Eagle organization soft. And it's not being played up enough. Basically said that you guys are front runners. And you don't practice hard enough. If you don't practice hard enough, that means you don't have a propensity to look at the details. Hence, guys coming in off and on the field, not knowing whether you have 10 or 11 guys on the field. Um, indecision in play calling, situational play calling, that that mess in New York. God, it really doesn't matter what the game is. It, it's just watching how you operate. You know what I'm saying? Dude, the Giant game? I don't know. Do you really want to go over something like the Giant game? I mean, how do you get blown out by that team and you have all that money spent? How do you get killed like that? How do you get killed like that? Look at Victor. Damn, we're 11 and 5. And you blow at 11 and 5. You're 11. Dude, you're 11 and 6. You blow. You've lost five of six, guy, and you've lost to the Jets, the Cardinals, the Seahawks, and the Giants. Relax. Yeah, all right. You've lost to teams that'll be in the lottery for the NFL draft in a couple months in April. I'm awake or you. So why are the players defending Sirianni? I'm confused. Well, I'll help you out. Because they know he's got nothing to do with it. He's a microcosm of the problem. I don't think there's one player in that building mad at Nick Sirianni. I don't think there's one player mad at him. He's a byproduct of the bullshit from above. How could you get mad at someone for taking orders and you know the orders are wrong and you know he's kind of in the boat with you? I'm not going to, I wouldn't be mad at Nick either. 
I would not be mad at Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni's going down with the ship. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this. That is where I'm going to give Nick Sirianni credit. For the first time in three years, I'm going to give Nick Sirianni some love. You ready? Now that I think about it, Nick Sirianni is going down with the ship. That's why the players are backing him. Because at least he's going down with them. Kudos to you, dude. Okay? Ray, that's not his job. His job is to be direct. His job is to be critical. His job is to coach. But in Philly, you are, you are a cheerleader. Yes, I guess so. In Philly, no wonder Doug couldn't handle it. Man, Mike Vrabel, Mike Tomlin, all them kind of guys. Can you imagine Mike Tomlin after that mess on Monday or Sunday sitting at the podium giving Newt Rockney speeches? Have you ever heard Mike Tomlin give a Newt Rockney speech? Or we're going to pick ourselves up off the floor. We're going to do this. I've never heard him talking shit like that ever. After wins, I hear him saying, hey, you know why we win? Because we don't let go of the rope. All of us have a piece on the rope, and it's a tug of war, the NFL. And we're going to keep pulling on the rope, and we're not going to let go. But we need everybody, all 53 guys, to pull on the rope. One guy doesn't, we all fail. That's the kind of shit he gives you. That's the kind of man that guy is. But when things go sideways, Ask baby Roethlisberger and ask the kid um, George Pickens. Ask him how he feels. I'll tell you what, man. You know what players really respect? You know what they respect? Being told the truth. Hey, son, you need to play better. Or I'll get someone else better than you. Or how about this? I'll get someone as good as you that I can coach better. I don't give a shit. This is on you. I want coaches like that. I don't want a coach that's going to go along to get along with management. Do you want to hear something? Nick's more concerned about upstairs than he in his own locker room. Think about that. He's more concerned how he's perceived by Howie and the owner than he is by his own team. He doesn't have to worry about his team because they have – Hey, get this. They like Nick. They respect Nick as a human, but they don't respect him as a coach. You know why? Why don't you think they don't respect Nick as a coach? Laurie isn't dumb. He saw how how he ran the team since Doug. He will be aggressive with the next head coach, Harbaugh being the top target. Way out of his range. Way out of his range. Harbaugh's going to command $20 million in complete control. And if I'm Harbaugh, why do I want to listen to Howie Roseman, the little guy, when I could sit at Alabama or, excuse me, at Michigan, and I could sit there and only have to deal with the, um, uh, the president of Michigan and boosters. I don't have to answer to anybody. Why would I want to do that and I can make $20 million a year? What's the point? of going to the pro so I have to answer to people when he doesn't have to answer to anybody at Michigan. Why? Because he wants to win a Lombardi truck? That's the dumbest thing on the planet. This is about direct deposit. This isn't about plastic trophies. This is about direct deposits. Will you guys stop with that? Well, it's a challenge. He wants to have a Super Bowl. It's exactly like his... No, no. I want to have direct deposits. That's a $20 million. He'll get fewer years to succeed in the NFL. At Michigan, he got six years before he beat Ohio State. He's going to get more latitude at Michigan. It makes no sense to coach in the NFL for Jim Harbaugh. None. Why? Well, he, he wants to win a Lombardi trophy. 
that's the stupidest thing you could ever tell anybody. Legacy. <laughs> okay, really? He's 44, 19, and one. He's very successful as an NFL head coach. He's 17 years as a player. He just won the national championship, and he's going to make $20 million, and he doesn't have to answer to anybody for the next 10 years. What job do you want? That Michigan job or having to deal with Howie Roseman, who could fire you in a year? Give me a break. Yeah, but it's about legacy. Legacy? It's about direct deposit. My God almighty. You guys talk like you're five years old. Talk like adults. Adults talk with finances, paying rent, resources, and money. Children talk about toys. Okay? Children talk about toys and trophies. Adults talk about money. I hear, I mean, especially you hear all these uh, talking heads talking shit like he'll want to go to, um, well, for what? He can make more money in the, in the college ranks. Not have to answer to anybody. I mean, stupid. Adults talk about dough. He'll go to the Eagles. That'll be a step up. So wait a minute. You think the Eagle head coaching job is a better? Oh my God. Do you think the Eagle head coaching job is a better job than Michigan? Do you guys think your job is a better job than the Michigan job? Yes or no? That's a college job. Do you think the Philadelphia Eagle job is a better job than a professional Legacy organization like the Eagles. What job would you want to have? Head coach of the Eagles or head coach of Michigan coming off a national title win? What job would you want when you look at the history of all them coaches that have been fired in previous years? Me personally, I'd rather coach college instead of the NFL. And, and Tone, it's not because of anything else other than this. You get more autonomy and more freedom in the college ranks and you can make as much money as the NFL. Is, do you think there's more prestige in the NFL? Probably. But remember something. Are you going to have control of your assistant coaching hires? Probably not. Are you going to have, you got personnel departments. Do you know who the personnel department is at Michigan? Jim Harbaugh. Do you understand that? That Jim Harbaugh runs the personnel department and the coaching staff at Michigan. You think he's getting that autonomy? And he runs the analytics. He got caught cheating with all those uh, scouts. So he runs the analytics department. He runs scouting. He runs the coaching staff. And you think he'll take the Philly job? First and foremost, how about this one? You think Philly would pay him $20 million annually? Think about that. The Philadelphia Eagle job is a lesser job than the Michigan job. Because of the history they've created. Do you know what a really good job is? You know what's a better job than your job? New England. New England is a better job. You know why? Because Bob Kraft's a hell of an owner. Bob Kraft won before Belichick. He went to a Super Bowl before Belichick got there. He hired Parcells. He hired Scott Pioli. He brought all the professionals in the building and got out of the way and paid the guys. New England's a better job than the Philly job. Why? Because you fire coaches every five years.
You fire. How many coaches has Bob Kraft had since he's owned a team in 96? Three? I think Carroll was there. Parcells was there. And Belichick. Has he? I, I think it's only three coaches he's had since he's owned a team, uh, since he bought it, I believe, for Victor Kayyem in 96. They hire and empower in New England. Chicago is a terrible job. Philadelphia is a mangling job with a lot of speed bumps to over. Nick has really had to overcome a lot of bullshit. Eagle Brass will not relinquish the control period. Then what are we talking about, Mike Vrabel? I know, I threw him out because I'd love to have him. They will cite Chick Kelly as a reason not to do so and a Super Bowl win to prove that they, they know best. There will never be sustained success under this crew. Relative, amen, take of the day. Yes, 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 yes. I, I said your super chat, Latino. Yes. That is the take of the day. Yes. That's why you have one title. And, and by the way, you're taking credit for something. Just like how people are doing it was more Brady than Belichick. It was more Doug than Howie. How you tell you the different though. It's different. See, you got to remember something. He's trying to erase the memory of Doug Peterson as much as he possibly can so that he can get credit. And, and, and you know what happened last year when they made it to the Super Bowl? Think of the two things in those two Super Bowls on what was the direct result of why you won and lost. You won because of coaching. You lost because of coaching. You can build it. You can't sustain it. Here, follow me. You can't sustain it because you're missing the draft. That's ego. How we will ever replace coordinators, keep Nick, or replace Nick with next underqualified shill. Best case, a new shill actually knows ball. Dude. Yeah, but by the way, do you know what they're expecting in television viewership for that game last night, that national title game? You know the semifinal game's got 35 million people watching it? You know the top 100 television shows in 2023 were all football? All football. All football. NBA was nowhere. World Series, I think, was somewhere in there. The rest of it was national title, college games, and NFL games. The television deals that are being, there's a reason the Pac-12 is going away because of the money that's being spent. They're going to get 50 million people watching that thing last night. Advertisers aren't going to the NBA. And it's not because the NBA is not a good product. It's the people putting it on. I don't want to be told who to vote for. I just want to watch a basketball game. Okay, that's why the TNT guys kill it. They have fun with it. ESPN tries to give you a directive. They've destroyed it. How many teams? Let's go down the list. Is, is, is the Miami Dolphin job better than the Eagle job? No, it's the same because the stupid-ass owner, Stephen Ross, is dumb. They got Chris Greer in the building, and they get in the way. Chris Greer is a really good GM, though. It, it, it's How about this one? Is the Eagle job better than the Cowboy job? I think they're the same. I think they're the same. I, I, I think they're the same. How he's in the way, Jerry's in the way. What's different? What's the difference? Jerry hires the coaches. How he hires the coaches. 
Jerry hires the head coach. Howie and the owner hire the head coach. What's the difference? They miss on draft picks. Actually, they're not that bad on draft picks. Jim Harbaugh to the Eagles is a joke. One, you don't have the structure in your organization to hire a guy like that. Secondly, you don't have the balls to do it. Thirdly, you wouldn't surrender the control to do it. I know you guys like to play fantasy football sometimes. A lot of you are Madden players, but take that out of your realm of possibilities. You'd have to fire the entire front office to hire Jim or to hire Jim Harbaugh. You'd have to fire everybody. And get this, any NFL team that hires him will have to fire everybody if you get him in the building. Why wouldn't Lori put Howie back in the closet? Because I said it before, and I'll say it again. And my friend LJ keeps bringing it up, and he's right. This guy does a great job at contract and constructing contracts. By the way, that's his forte. He came from, he's a capologist guy. That's who he is. He's a salary cap guy. He's not a personnel guy. He's never been a personnel guy. Hence why he fails in the draft. Your last three drafts have brought you nothing but big name schools. They have brought you nothing. Okay, Devontae Smith, yes. The rest of them, nothing. Nothing. Zero. Carter has a future. Okay, Davis, he flamed out. Dude, it's not 13 games. In the NFL, it's 17 plus the playoffs. You got to get your fat ass in shape. It's 20 games to win a Super Bowl. Okay? It's 20 games. Sometimes 21. Get your fat ass in shape. This guy's playing a college... This guy still thinks he's in college. 13th game of the season? That was it. Ripcord pulled. This guy went through the trap door. This guy's on a milk carton somewhere. Carter, I get it. You see the great ability he has. I'll give that kid a pass. The rest of them? Where are you? Dude, you have nothing in the building to build your future with, especially on defense. You got two tackles. The rest of it is all mercenaries and trash cans. Come on now. That Eagle job is not a good job. Eagle's job sucks when Lane and Kelsey retire. Get this. An outsider's going to go, well, shit. Look at Sirianni's record. Three straight playoffs. Why is he in the hot seat? Because he's not really a coach. The tradition of micromanaging goes all the way back to Joe Banner. It's more than just Roseman era. It, it, you're right. It's Jeffrey Lurie. But here, here's the one thing, Mike, that I told Tone yesterday. Here's the one thing. Jeffrey Lurie did pull the ripcord and go and get a college guy. Now, remember something here. Chip was just the wrong hire. But he has done it. There is a sample size of it. And someone goes like this. They'll never go back and do that again. I hate people like that. That's like saying, well, if I draft a shitty wide receiver, I'm not going to draft Devontae Smith. 
Keep taking swings until you get it. And hopefully, you don't have to take too many swings to lose your job. Remember something, though, folks. Howie Roseman's not in the building because he's a talent evaluator. You know what? I think right here, Tone, everyone, I think this is the biggest misnomer. Howie Roseman's not in the building because he is a roster builder. He's in the, he's in the building because he knows how to balance the salary cap and he knows how to build a roster through finances. That's the only reason he's in the building. It's not because he's some psycho great talent evaluator like you have. What's that guy's name up in Detroit? What's his name? Hughes? Is that guy's name Hughes that's running Detroit right now? Because that guy in Detroit is landing on three or four players every single year. Every year since they traded Matthew Stafford. Every year. They're building a found. I'll tell you this. No doubt in my mind, Detroit's going to be a great franchise for a long time. For a long time. You know why? They got a ton of great players on rookie deals. They got a ton of great players. Who do you have on a rookie deal on the defensive side that's good? The two tackles. Who else? That's good. Who else? That's a great future in Detroit. It's a great future. You know why? They're bringing talent in in the draft. They're going to be able to balance their salary cap. How he can't. That's why he can't sustain what Jeff Kerr said. Was it last week? He can't sustain success because he misses too much in the drafts, overpays for free agents. He's better in pro personnel. Okay. Look at all those great draft picks that they have collected. In the last three years in Detroit, got better and better every year. I I don't know what their future is this year. I I don't. I think they're ahead of schedule. You know, for them to have done what they have done this year, I'm kind of surprised. I think next year and the year after, that's going to be when you're going to start to see everything really. Hey, and by the way, Jared Goff is maybe the most underrated quarterback in the league. He's, he might be the most underrated quarterback that has played. And he gets to play against the Rams who got rid of him. Who would have thought that the Rams would have to travel to Detroit to play Jared Goff's NFC North? Champion Lions. Crazy great. Got a great head coach. By the way, let me ask you something about – um. Dan Campbell versus your guy, Nick Pinocchio. Let's do this here. Would you rather have a coach that goes for two, three times in a row, or a coach that coaches with a headset that's connected to the analytics department? Who would you rather play for? God takes accountability for losing him solely or the people upstairs that are directing your puppet coach. Who'd you rather play for? Hey, was Dan wrong? Yeah. Ain't no analytics. You know what going for two was three times? Hey, coach, let's run Philly, Philly. Go ahead. Dan Campbell's more like Doug Peterson. Players want to play for Doug Peterson, Dan Campbell. They don't want to play for bookworms. They want to play for people that win. And get this, they want to play for people that win. Not 11 wins. Get this. Let's put this out here. 
And I told you this was going to happen to you. So 14 and 3, 11 and 6. You're 25 and 9 at the conclusion of this year. You may get beat by the Bucks in the regular season. And you ain't got shit to show for it. What's the point? You might as well be 9 and 25. What's the point? What's the point of being 25 and 9 when you ain't got shit to per- show for it? You're kind of good. Wow. That's an attitude I didn't think resided in that city. Hey, you're 25 and 9. And that's like telling me the Sixers are going to win 50 games but get bounced in the opening round. You know what I would say? That's a losing season again. Trust the process. Okay, Josh. You see, give me a 55 wins, you get bounced in the opening round. I don't care about 55 wins. Everyone's all going crazy. You think John Tortorella cares about his record? I know John. I covered John for five years in Tampa. John Tortorella doesn't give a shit about anything but Stanley Cups. You know how hard he coached Javi Bullen? Nikolai Javi Bullen couldn't stand John Tortorella because John Tortorella was always on his ass. Marty St. Louis couldn't stand him. Vinny LeCavier couldn't couldn't stand him. But you know what they did? They respected him. (laughs) Look at this guy here. Prayer goes there's an NFC championship out of that. Congratulations for your silver medal. The Philadelphia citizens celebrating silver medals now. Congratulations to you, kid. I guess you can hang that silver medal right over the Rocky statue. Look good on him. I thought Rocky fought for the heavyweight championship, not for showing up. Congratulations to you. You might as well put that silver medal right there over the Rocky statue. Celebrating second place trophies. Damn. You actually have people in that city that celebrate that shit? I do have a ring. I have won a championship. Sorry, Callie. I have won a championship. Have you? Let me guess. You're flag football guys somewhere down in uh, South Philly, right? Running around with flags on your belts. It's okay. I count that. I guess. <laughs> no. Here, Tone, should I do it? Well, here's one, Natty. Here's another Natty. Here's an ACC championship we won. There's a couple Natties. Let's see if I put them on there like this. Put them on there like that. How's that look? How does that look? Then we got to turn this this way because you got to make sure everybody sees it. How's that look? You think that looks okay? <laughs> Checking. He asked me if I won a championship. Have you? How's that look? <laughs> yeah, I like that shooter. Shooter goes, hey, Sills, you look like a Boston Celtic guy. As a matter of fact, that does look like, hey, I look like Bill Russell. Look at that. It looks like Bill Russell. How's that there, man, right? Looks like Bill Russell. 
They made a pretty big deal out of them natties last night. I was like, damn. I guess we did something accomplished. Yeah, Flex, it's all good, man. Hey, I had to because I love bringing them out sometimes. Okay? Those ain't college participation trophies, jackass. Those are winning it all. Those, those ain't participation. Those are winning it. How you doing? All right. Let's do this. What are the ramifications of Monday night's game? What's the ramifications? What's the ramifications? Do you really think they'll fire? Okay. The offense looked better with Mario. No, it did. Stop with that, please. Please. The backup quarterback is the most famous quarterback on every NFL football team. Okay. Okay. Now, the backup court, Mari- Mariota is a nobody. I'll tell you what I did like. Here's something that I thought Gary Gary Cobb brought up yesterday that a lot of people haven't brought up. They should bring in a veteran guy that has won and have him sit behind Jalen. He's the only guy that could talk to him. And tell him, you know, perfect guy would have been, you had him too, is Flacco. And sitting him behind Hurts, what are you saying? What are you doing? Hey, don't worry about that. You're going to have to make a different call on that. Have a guy like that in his ear. If you're going to put shitty coaches around him, don't put shitty backups behind him. Marcus Mariota's a nobody. Put somebody that's got some context. If you're going to pay your quarterback $50 million, there's another position they failed at. I don't care Marcus Mariota kind of looks like him. Jalen Hurts needs to have someone talk to him, especially when you have incompetent coaches around him. Put someone there that's been there. Put someone there that has had tough times, has gone through down times has gone through winning moments. Have a quarterback in the building there that's been in, in that has been around winning. Matt Ryan? Shit, I'll tell you what, I'd like to have had Philip Rivers as his backup. Can you imagine Philip Rivers what the impact he would have had sitting there as his backup? How much he would have helped? But then again, that's something that the organization would probably balk at. They wouldn't want any meddling or interference. Dude, Nick Foles would be a great backup for Jalen Hurts. But there'd be too much drama behind it. They got enough drama in the building now. Okay? They need a more expensive... They need to get that kid some help. Let me tell you something. If Jalen Hurts goes to Tampa and he looks horrible, you're going to have question marks and they're going to look at him the same way they looked at Carson Wentz. And you know what the conversation is going to be? You paid him too soon. And then get this. You're going to be all the way back to the beginning of 2022. With Jalen Hurts, is he the guy? You think he's the guy. But like I said, you've had three different, completely different years in Jalen Hurts. The 21 year, the 22 year, the 23 year, all completely different. And the swings have been crazy. He was okay. 
in 21. He wasn't special. 22, he was special. This year, he's not special. Is it coaching? Okay, I'll give you the, hey, I want to give him the latitude. I want to give him the benefit. I really do. And I'm going to. I, I'm not indicting the kid. But they are three faces of Eve here. Okay, I mean, who are you? Well, I'm going to go back to the growth of 21 or 22. That's old news, dude. That's old news. Who are you now? March 17th, $50 million starts getting paid to you and direct deposited. Who are you? Who are you, dude? I'll tell you what. He goes into week eight of next year, and he's still turning the ball over. You'll start to hear the whispers. They paid him too soon. Remember I told you, man, black quarterbacks don't get a lot of autonomy and a lot of runway. He's going to get criticized immensely. Shit, they were calling Dak Prescott to be fired last year to calling him a turnover machine. I looked it up. Dak Prescott's not a turnover machine. He was a turnover machine last year. Jalen Hurts is a turnover machine in 2023. Is he a turnover machine? No. He's had more turnovers this year than the last two years combined. Does that make him a turnover machine? Josh Allen's a turnover machine. Because every year he's turned the ball over 15 times or more. That's a turnover machine. But what saves that guy's ass, he puts 45 touchdowns on the board and throws for 4,500 yards. And he's won the AFC East four years in a row. That's what saves him. That's what saves Allen. He wins. Dude, Dak Prescott's going to finish second when it comes to um, when it, when it when it comes to the MVP voting. Why? Because he's a cowboy. Because he's a Dallas Cowboy. We're going to do the top ten teams, and we're going to do the MVP race. I'm not sure we'll do the quarterbacks today. We may. We may do the quarterbacks as well. But um, this is the final regular season one. Merrill Reese will join us at 3.30 Eastern time, the legendary voice. And he said he hasn't felt anything like this since Doug was fired. So Merrill's going to join us. And he said that on IP today. Okay, and we will we will talk to him at 3.30. Tone will be moved to 4.30 for his segment. Ron Jaworski's tomorrow too, by the way. All right, want to tell you guys about our great friends at Hooters. I mean, absolutely great specials. I told you about Tuesdays, buy 10 wings, get 10 free. Our great lunch specials, Monday through Friday, 10.30 to 3 p.m., boneless wings. You get yourself some boneless wings. Absolutely awesome. Monday through Friday. Four to six, six items, six bucks. Great specials that we have. Great times. The calendars are out too. 2024 calendars are out. There's $100 in gift coupons that are inside the calendars. Do me a favor. Go to northeasttutors.com. That's northeasttutors.com. And when you roll in, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sales sent you. Let's go to break tone. Tone, let's go to break. Well, how are you doing? We're trying to get the break here. We might be frozen up here a little bit. Thank you, Camel. Can we go to break?
we go. Football 